Dear all, Namaste. Today I shall be discussing on oral submucous fibrosis. It is a very common condition found in Thorai belt of Nepal region and in the northern part of India where they have a habit of taking betel knots. Oral submucous fibrosis is defined as chronic debilitating disease of oral mucosa characterized by inflammation and progressive fibrosis of lamina propria and deeper connective tissues which follows stiffening of an otherwise yielding mucosa resulting in difficulty in opening the mouth. Patients with oral submucous fibrosis will have irritation in throat and oral cavity followed by difficulty to open the mouth due to submucous fibrosis in the buccal mucosa especially near the region of the interior pillars. Buccal mucosa is the most common site for oral submucous fibrosis to present but it can often be found in any parts of the oral cavity. Why is this disease so important? This is so important because it has malignant potential. Therefore, this is called as precancerous lesion of the oral cavity. Patient might develop cancer when the patient is having oral submucous fibrosis for a longer time. What is the etiology of oral submucous fibrosis? Etiology is not well understood and it is supposed to be multifactorial. The most important contributing factor is the erica not sewing, also called as supari in Nepali. Ingestion of chilies leading to a hypersensitive reaction of the chilies to the oral mucosa. Its association with genetic and immunological processes has been found by SLA-18, B7 and DR3 associations. Certain nutritional deficiencies like iron deficiency, vitamin B complex deficiency and malnutrition are supposed to be associated with this condition because all these conditions will lead to delayed wound healing and there will be some form of impairment in the submucosal region. As I have already told, ericoline or the active alkaloid which is found in ericanots or brittle knots is the main factor to cause oral submucous fibrosis. Betel knots are the most common contributing factor for oral submucous fibrosis. We can see here this is the betel knot and this is the betel knot tree. Ericoline causes oral submucous fibrosis by stimulating fibrogenesis. There will be much fibrosis. Increasing collagen synthesis by fibroblast. So collagen leads to stiffening of the mucosa and decreasing collagen degradation. So increased collagen synthesis and decreased collagen degradation leads to excess of collagen in the submucosal layer that leads to fibrosis. What are the clinical features of oral submucous fibrosis? The patient presents with oral pain and burning sensation upon consumption of spicy foodstuffs in the early stages because of irritation of the oral cavity. The patient might complain of dryness of mouth or change in gustatory sensation because of decreased production of the saliva. Impure mouth movements during eating and blowing will be there when there is fibrosis. Progressive inability to open the mouth leading to trismus happens in late stages. Patient also might have hearing loss due to stenosis of the station tube or patient might have station tube dysfunction. And nasal intonation of voice is common in these patients because of shrunken and bird like uvula that leads to velopharyngeal insufficiency. What are the signs? What do we see on examination of oral cavity? In the first stage, patient will have stomatitis, there will be erythematous mucosa, vesicles, mucosal ulcers, and petechiae that lead to burning sensation of the oral cavity while taking the chilies and spicy foodstuffs. Second stage is the fibrosis. On examination of the oral mucosa, there will be blanched floor of the mouth and soft palate with decreased mobility. There might be stiffness or trismus. Blanched and atrophic tonsils will be seen along with the shrunken and bird like uvula that might lead to velopharyngeal insufficiency. Third stage is sequelae. Patient might have leukoplakia and speech and hearing deficits due to trismus or stiffening of the mucosa. In this picture, you can see the white patch on the soft palate and intertransular pillars area on the uvula and even the hard palate. In the second picture, you can see also scar band in the soft palate area and towards the entry pillar that leads to difficulty to open the mouth or trismus. How to treat oral submucous fibrosis? First, we should try with the medical treatment. Steroids are the mainstay of treatment in oral submucous fibrosis, but they have only short term improvement. They have to be given weekly submucosal injections of dexamethasone 40 mg or times known 40 mg for 6 to 8 weeks. Patients should stop taking pan and supari. Topical application of vitamin cream 0.05% for 3 weeks is also 
beneficial for some patients. The second treatment is hyaluronidase intraregional. This also lowers the viscosity of the intestinal cement substance and decreases collagen formation. But nowadays it is very difficult to find this drug. These are the injection sites near the anterior pillar where we inject the drug. So steroids and topical hyaluronidase used together they provide better long term results than either agent used alone. Both can be given as injections if available. Other treatment choices are submucosal administration of Equus placental extract which acts as anti-inflammatory agent, inhibits mucosal damage, inhibits fibrogenesis also. Intralegional injection of interferon gamma has a questionable role. It has immunoregulatory effect and has antifibrotic cytokine, so there might be less fibrosis. The progression of disease might be stopped. Pentoxyphylin in a dose of 400 mg three times a day for 4 to 6 months can be used with the hope to increase vascularity in the area affected. Different surgical treatment plans have been proposed for oral submucous fibrosis. The indications for surgeries patients with severe trismus, biopsy results revealing dysplastic or neoplastic changes. So, when the patient is having either cancer or when the patient is about to have cancer, then operation has to be done. And when the patient cannot open the mouth properly, we have to operate on the patient for the betterment to open the mouth. Different procedures for oral submucous fibrosis as the surgical treatment plan are simple or laser excision of fibrous bands. The fibrous band can be excised by laser surgery, so patient feels easy to open the mouth. Split thickness skin grafting following bilateral temporalis myotomy, coronoidectomy or resection of the fibrous bands also makes the patient to open the mouth easy. Excision of fibrotic tissues and covering the defect with fresh human amnion or buccal fat patch grafts has been tried. Surgical excision of the bands and some mucosal placement of fresh human placental graft also has been tried for increased vascularity and to decrease the collagen formation there. Less commonly practiced surgical methods are nasolabial flap repair, lingual pedicle flap, plasma migraines flap, etc., which are also occasionally used in cases of oral submucous fibrosis. So basic aim of treatment in oral submucous fibrosis is to restore the patient's normal oral mucosa and to prevent formation of the cancer. This disease may take around 8 to 10 years for recovery. We expect a short question from this topic. I hope that you will find this topic useful in your exams. This is practically important if you practice in the southern part of Nepal and in the northern part of India. You will come across many cases of oral submucous fibrosis, some having frank cancer also. Thank you. Have a good day.